Turning to international news, the leaders of the coup in Niger have closed the country's airspace. The move is in response to a threat of military intervention by neighboring West African countries. The economic community of West African states is made up of 15 countries, including Niger. The bloc set a deadline of late Sunday night for President Mohamed Bazoum to be reinstated, warning they are willing to use force to help bring that about. That deadline has now come and gone with no change. CBC's Abby Kuga Dawson is in our London bureau and tracking this story. Abby, the deadline has now passed. Uh, how are the coup leaders reacting? Diana, the coup leaders have essentially held a massive rally at a stadium in Niamey, the capital, yesterday. Thousands were in attendance cheering and clapping. The army is definitely trying to show that they have widespread support for the coup. And that came as a military spokesperson said that they've closed the airspace, as you mentioned, in the belief that regional allies are preparing to intervene. Experts point out there is no indication at this time that ECOWAS, that regional block you mentioned is preparing to send in soldiers. The West African body did threaten armed intervention if civilian rule was not restored by Sunday. That was yesterday. And this warning was certainly unprecedented from the bloc, which views this coup as another destabilizing event that hampers their collective ability to fight extremists in the region. But we know that there are divisions among African leaders, too. While Nigeria and Senegal are prepared to send in troops, Countries, including Algeria and Chad, have made it very clear they do not support such a decision. There is also a concern of a possible regional war after Mali and Burkina Faso, ruled by juntas themselves, said they stand with Niger's military leaders. One resident in the capital told BBC News people there are very worried, but they can't protest the coup because the military has shot at demonstrators. Abby, you were telling us that this is obviously there's potential for great regional conflict here, but Niger is also a major ally of the West, uh, particularly in the fight against jihadists. How are Western countries reacting? Well, the first reaction has been sort of to cut off funding. Canada has already announced it will cut off financial assistance. France now says that it will suspend aid worth about $530 million. You know, the West has been pouring quite a bit of money, about $2 billion annually, into the country, seen as the last democratic domino in the Sahel, an ally, as you say, in the counterterrorism fight. But some analysts say all that aid raised expectations among the people, expectations that were not met under President Bazoun. And there is also plenty of anti-French sentiment. And experts warn the West can't take the lead here and appear to be imposed Posing a president, even a democratically elected one. And now with Western aid drying up, there is a concern, a worry that Niger's military leaders will look elsewhere. Nick Westcott is a former UK ambassador to Niger. He told me most African leaders are worried about Russian mercenaries in their backyard. Moscow has support to get amongst one or two governments, but not more generally, because uh, the rest of the African countries understand. Moscow will back chaos. They profit from chaos. And most African governments do not, and therefore want to restore genuine stability, which means restoring democracy. Now, Wagner operates in nearby nations like Mali following the coup there. Wagner has offered to send its own fighters to Niger if they're asked, Diana. They have to, Western countries have to play a very delicate uh, game of diplomacy there. Thank you so much. CBC's Abby Kuga Dawson in London.